Some of my friends from my hometown is actually down here in Iowa doing some skydiving, so I've never made it out to actually check this out, but not too far away from me, so I figured today I would come out and actually check it out. Really beautiful day for this, so pretty cool to be out here actually, see what's going on. So this is my friend Seth, and that's why I'm here today, to come check out this skydiving thing. So, how did you kind of get into this whole thing, and I know you've been into action sports and all that stuff for a long time, but this is uh, kind of maybe unique. A little bit of bull ride, a little bit of dirt biking, and all this. So anything specific that made you want to get into this? Or uh, well, I don't know, I just started jumping back in 2007, I did my first ever tandem, and then... I went a few years without jumping. I tried taking a static line course, tried getting into it. Just, it's one of them sports where once you start, you have to keep going. You can't just, mm -hmm. you can't stop or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in a static line course once, didn't quite work out, and then waited a couple of years, and then I did another tandem. I was like, you know, this is something I really want to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I ended up uh, breaking up with a girlfriend. And I had a bunch of free time on my hands, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So I did <clears throat> the first static line course that I could do in Laverne, Minnesota, mm -hmm. at Skydive Adventures. Uh, got in there right away in April, beginning of April. Did their first jump course, did a couple jumps, just totally buzzed right through it. I ended up having my license by like July, and then mm -hmm. I just kind of kept going with it from there, and now here I am at Boogie's doing big way stuff, yep. having a good time. And you're, how many jumps in are you now? Uh, 166, so okay. that's pretty small compared to a lot of the people that are walking mm -hmm. around yep. here. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you here in just a little bit, so it should be yeah, fun. Yeah, we'll be suiting up and getting out of play. There you go. So if you look down in there, you got one, two, three, four. Then you want them to go out and then back, and then you'll have one, two, three, four. Yep. Some of the things I really never thought about were kind of the intricacies of actually packing those parachutes and all that. You just kind of think like, oh, it's a parachute. But that was kind of cool to see that part. It's gonna be pretty awesome here to see him actually get in the plane, get up there, and then I'm gonna try to get some cool shots when he's coming down to the ground. I was actually really, really hoping that you were going to bring your camera. <laughs> I was like, this would be so sweet if Ryan could bring his camera and kind of make like a day at the drop zone kind of video. Yeah, well, I was like, I've only lived like 10 minutes from here, so I just haven't been able to make it out before. But Like normally, all they fly is that. Okay. They just fly a Cessna, but every, like, every other weekend, they either get an Otter in or a Caravan. A caravan's a single prop on the front. It's a little bit smaller, only holds 16, maybe 18. But uh, much faster, huge prop on the front. Mm -hmm. This thing climbs so fast. And then this is an otter, and this holds 23 people. And it's still a turbine, so it still yep. climbs pretty fast. All right, so that is everybody comes in. Start in the back. Sit down, got your rig on. Take uh, this little end here. You go through your leg strap, bundle it up, good. Make sure the guy in front of you is good, split your legs. He sits down with his rig like right here. And then sometimes like the person in front of you, you can clip it to their shoulder strap and then you just so on and so forth. Just keep working your way down. Everybody sits on their butt in between each other's legs. For takeoff, yeah. Take it. And slide it down. Take off. And as it says here, seat belts and helmets must be worn. 
to a thousand feet. Beep beep, we got altimeters in our helmet when we hit a thousand feet. They go off, so I'm gonna say, check your pods. That's checking your pilot chute. Door will come open for a little bit. We'll ride it out until about 8,000 feet with the door open just to have air conditioning. And then uh, at that point, like tandem instructors and stuff, they like to start getting ready in the back of the plane. So door comes back shut and then they start doing their business. We kind of do our last minute check, <coughs> jump run when you get on that, which is pretty much north today because there's no wind. Yeah, and jump run, you get everybody together, a bunch of high fives, good times. All right, this door is gonna, this light right here is gonna turn red. And that lets you know the pilot is telling you that you're on jump run about two minutes out or so. And then once that light turns on, then this light's gonna turn on. And that's notifying us that we have charge of the door in the back of the plane. So it's all right, everybody, door. Throw the door up. Lean out, take your spot, make sure that you can see the airport, like here you got the airport, you got a lake over there, you got town that way. Make sure you know where you're at geographically, because if you're two miles that way, <laughs> shut the door and tell the pilot to redo it. But uh, you look out, make sure you're in a good spot, wait for that green light, green light, green light, green light goes, you're normally in a group, swing out. Like you're either, either back here, or like here, or here. Otherwise, if you're real badass, there's a camera step clear out here that you can stand on. And then there's also another gripper up here on top of the plane that you can hold on to. So like, and then like plane, plane's heading that way. Whoop into the wind otherwise like what I'm doing today I'm free flying so it's basically like everybody takes a grip and then ready set out and then like you grab each other and kind of let yourself go ahead down and it's awesome basically it this is the one that I wear on my wrist and it tells me within 10 feet of where I'm at altitude wise so when I take off on the ground it's basically nothing till about 200 feet and then it automatically kicks on to 200 feet mm -hmm. yeah we jump out here at 13,000 feet mm -hmm. so uh, when we're in the plane and like we're wearing our seatbelt till a thousand feet like I explained earlier mm -hmm. this thing at a thousand feet it'll go beep, 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 and it'll let you know that you're at a thousand feet so then you take off your seatbelt and everything like that and then uh, get up to altitude, you do your jump. When you hit 5,000 feet is what I have my uh, first alarm set at. Mm -hmm. 5,000 feet, I'm gonna have one siren that goes off and that's all right, time to get away from everybody. So like when you're free flying and stuff, you check out to your back, clear your airspace, make every, sure nobody's above you for mm -hmm. one. And then you flip back over to your belly and then you track away there's somebody below you that you're like tracking in their same mm -hmm. line stop tracking and turn a little bit and yeah. track in the opposite direction got it so tracking 3500 feet you hit 3500 feet lets another siren go off in my helmet and then that tells me i gotta pull my hard deck is 2000 feet if i have any malfunctions or anything like that i have another siren that goes off and it really like pew, pew. Mm -hmm let you know yep. you got to do something so yep. if I have any malfunctions above me or anything like that 2,000 feet chop it see you later do what you got to do yep. emergency procedure wise and then go cool. take it from there all right about to get on the plane got to make sure that uh, do a check you know make sure you got your helmet make sure you got your dinner in your helmet make sure you got your sunglasses if you're looking cool Make sure your harness is all good, everything's good. Make sure you got your altimeter on your wrist and go for it.
Everybody's just hauling ass on landing. <laughs> How was it? Awesome. I, uh, I turned her in pretty hard there on my final to try to make it look like I knew what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there he is, spinning around. <laughs> well, no, like on that final, you know, like I didn't really do much of a base. I just went right into my final. I did my downwind and then just cranked it at like 300 feet. Mm -hmm. So like when you crank it and do like a 180 like that, it makes you lose a lot of altitude. Yeah. So I lost a hundred feet and just spinning around going to my final. And then yeah, that's why I came in hauling ass too. Like. <laughs> well, that was pretty uh pretty cool to see him jump. Finally got to do that and put a little video together. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, right on, man. Appreciate awesome. it. Good to see you. You too, bud. Yep. See you later. Really cool experience to kind of learn about that, see that. There's a lot more people doing it than I kind of imagined that there would be. Check out the good old Iowa view from this airport here. That's it.